Uh, I work for DGI. Oh, sorry. I work for the Qt company. And um, I just want to show with you how to write a benchmark because, uh, honestly speaking, like, okay, I want to write with you a benchmark with Qt Testlib uh, because it's so damn easy and it, make, it is actually fun. Who has written a benchmark with Qt Testlib before? Ah, okay, great. So, but the majority doesn't, which is a shame because. Um, at least if you're a developer um, and you're a C++ developer, you often discuss about performance and do code reviews and say, ah, that should be actually written a different way and so on. But um, yeah, I mean, often we just discuss and it's so easy to do some, some testing. Um, so I want to write with you a benchmark about something uh, which actually Char Thiago uh, Marciera uh, talked about like in the last big session, which is um, literals and Q-strings, who has been in that session? Great, you can help me. So uh, the question I want to find out with you is actually experimentally, uh, what is the fastest way to compare to Q a literal to Q-string? So I've listed a couple of alternatives. Um, I mean, there are more, but I think that's the canonical ones. Um, who, anyone can say what will be the fastest method? Like, what would you expect? The last one? Q string from Latin one? Pardon? The third one, Q string little. Yeah, well, let's find out. So I I have been told that this is a crappy laptop and it is. <laughs> and I found out that the X code on it is just too old, so I'm using a virtual machine, so that will be interesting. It is interesting because you can't see what I see. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, how to synchronize? On. So, hang on. Here you can see it. All right, so that's my backup project, so let's hide it. Um, so I'm going to write it with Qt Creator, uh, and it's actually a, in a non obvious place, so you have to go to other project, Qt Unit Test. Let's take a better. I hope everybody can read that. I enlarged the font a bit. Uh, so we are calling it Little Compare. Right, that exists, that doesn't matter. That, just ignore it. That is interesting, so here I can actually configure the test unit test that I want to do. Uh, and the first type of thing I want to do is, I actually don't want to use a, a functional test, but a benchmark. And I will have a one test case, which I will already level as string, so. That will be my first one. Usually you almost always want to use also a test data set, but in this case, because of the short time, we don't do that. But that allows you to kind of try different combinations of input. Yeah, I'm gonna reload it. So here we go, all in one file. And you see that actually a benchmark, so um, I mean, that's the whole test, which has actually one test right now, which is called string. And uh, there is a magic Q benchmark macro and whatever I put in here is tested. So I have to do some preparations actually to do something. So first of all, I have to have a literal to compare to. Let's just, damn it, do that like that, right? And uh, because we are comparing two littles, I need two of them. But let's keep it the same for now. Okay. And I mean, a, a comparison actually consists always of two sides. So the one side will be constant. So we can as well. That's typing on a Mac keyboard in <laughs> Linux. <laughs> okay, let's do that.
So, and here we do something like Gosh, I'm sorry, something's messed up. Do I have a comparative? Com no, hey. <laughs> so I'm comparing to um, the second one, which will be, so the first thing I think was Q-string literal, or let's do it first. So first is Q-string literal. Right. Oh, let's call that string literal then. Second one was um, string, just a constructor. Right, and I'm just copying that here. And what we only want to test here is just Q-string. And the third one is from Latin one set. One, someone said from, from, from Latin one should be fast, right? So let's try that. So then I will do something uh, important, and that is usually I don't want to debug a uh, profile, a debug build, because it's just interest, uninteresting. So let's see how far we got with that one. Hey, we get some results. Can everybody read that? Also in the back? Well, I mean, what we have now is uh, we did um, actually um, measure the wall time. So there we have some milliseconds. Um, you see some numbers here. Iterations means actually that um, Q bench slip is, uh, into, uh, or Q test slip is, um, try, does try to run it uh, a couple of times. Actually, one more than, more than a million times to get, just get a stable result. I can tell you it has also a warm up phase, so it starts running that test a couple of times and then only measures and so on, so it's already quite, quite good. And we get some results here. So that seems like, yeah, no, it's very little numbers, but from that run, I'd say, hey, string literal is the fastest. String constructor is slower, and string from Latin will well be in between. But let's just rerun it again. Well, let's see what happens then. Hmm. Yeah, these numbers, you know, is a bit of noise. So what do we do about that? Um, we can do a, a couple of things. We can run it with nice commands so that it gets more CPU time so that it doesn't reschedule. Um, but also the benchmarking tools has a couple of help uh, helper arguments that we can't pass in. I just want to show it to you. So here, actually, at the end, already the benchmarking option. So you see we can measure different things. I mean, that was wall time. And if the CPU just decided to deschedule that process, then, I mean, the wall time still runs. So we have a couple of other things we can uh, measure in CPU ticks, which should be a bit more stable. Um, this is Linux, so uh, we actually have also perf and a million of options, uh, what you can, you can like cache misses and you can measure all kind of stuff. So we can decide to measure something else, but let's take for wall time for, uh, for this uh, run. The other thing is we can tweak um, what to do with the uh, iteration. So we could say, let's just run it half an hour and then, you know, it should kind of get better results or more stable results. But uh, and also an interesting thing is we do we, using the median. So that's, I mean, that's the usual trick. If you have like a lot, lot of volatility, you can use that. So I could read now on with median five, but I'm running out of time. I just want to show you that actually you can also dump that data out. Um, that's now a bit uh, pre-prepared, but that's pretty easy. So I just uh, run it uh, before and uh, with minus C as 
V and then load it in open office. So it's a one minute affair to actually generate some, some nice graphs, whether you have confidence or not is the second thing. But going back to the presentation, I'd like to sum up. So that's testlib. It's really powerful. It's very fast to create um, like quick tests for self-contained code snippets. There are these two macros, QBenchmark, QBenchmark once. Don't worry about QBenchmark once until you need it. Uh, you can export stuff. Uh, generally, for stable to test results, just use release builds. Uh, make sure that the test code has a side effect. Actually, I ignored that in this test case, but it worked anyway. Um, then there are different measure. And then there are these options like iterations and median to actually allow you to fine tune your test run. And then you can answer such tricky questions like what is the fastest in, in no time. Right? Okay, thank you.